I, I'm just going to, I have three practical questions that I'd like answered, if you could, quickly, and okay. then I'm just going to make some comments sure. in relation to childcare. Thank um, you. Number one, the mother and baby home report. Has COVID interfered with that, or will it be published promptly, and if so, when? Number two, has Tusla carried out a risk analysis of the uh, effects of closed down on, on child protection? If so, is there a paper available on that? Have they produced a paper on risk analysis? And third, practical question in relation to the historical sexual abuse and scouting. Uh, a learning review. The date is March. There's no specific date on it. I'm presuming it's two months later or now. We're in. Have you had any input after that report was produced? When did you see it? What's the status of it now, given the horrific contents of it? Thank you. And then that, sorry, that last one was on the scouting? On the scouting okay. report. Okay. Yep. All right, and um, uh, your first question uh, in, in relation to the Mother yeah. and Baby Homes report, um, uh, my, as I said before, my, uh, we have no other information that it will, other than that it will be delivered June, towards the end of June, uh, the exact date, but the date that was originally agreed with. Um, the secondly, and in, in terms of the practical, I'm sorry, deputy. Mm -hmm. Risk assessment from Tesla. Okay, yes, exactly. I, I know they have done a risk assessment. I know they are, uh, you know, and have identified strategies to, in order to mitigate that. Do they have a paper? I don't know, but I will find out. And if they do, I will ensure that, that you get that. Um, and then in terms of the Scouting Ireland, um, the, the, the Ian Elliott report, um, uh, I did see it before it was published. My officials did. I think it was, I can't say exactly when, right now. Um, to the report? No, after the report in terms of recommendations to the cabinet. Uh, an input in terms of the recommendations. Yeah, the report has been published. Yes. It's done on behalf of Scouting Ireland. Yes. Have you had an input at government level since then in terms of what the next steps are? For what happens with Scouting Ireland? What happens in relation to the report? Oh, in terms of whether there's a statutory yeah. inquiry or not? Yeah. Is that is that large where you're, um, there hasn't been a discussion at, at, at no cabinet. No discussion at cabinet? No. Okay, thank you, Minister. Yeah. Generally, I realise it's difficult, and I thank you for your professionalism in relation to how you're approaching the subject. But I have to say, I, I, I do not believe that childcare was given appropriate attention at the level of NEFIT. And maybe it wasn't their role, but certainly when you look back on the minutes, on the 16th of March, it comes up for an item under discussion, and it's put into another date. It doesn't appear. And I went through the dates. So it goes from the 16th of March to the 31st of March, the 3rd of April, the 7th of April. And during during that time, there was a talk about essential workers, then there was a talk about essential care workers, then it was kept under review and a paper was presented. Now, I asked you the last time you were here, is there a copy of that paper that was pre presented and uh, noted under the minutes? Because surely all the problems were identified. But in fact, if you could just maybe, if you have, to tell me uh, at the end. But the point I want to make here is it's clear that what we need is a public childcare. We need a delivery of childcare by the state and the state didn't do that and problems have been created and of course we have to go in and always pick up the pieces if, if, in relation to the nursing homes. In, in relation to childcare the problem has arisen because for many reasons and I look here at a research paper and I want to thank the Nevin Institute and you might get your department to look at it and the Nevin Institute and in particular the researcher Lisa Wilson and she has set out that quite clearly there's a misalignment between the opening up, the roadmap for opening up, and the absence of childcare facilities. And it didn't appear at all in the roadmap published by the government, except to say creches will open at a certain date in a very reduced manner. But no policy, no policy intervi intervention, no realisation of the extent of the service provided by childcare workers and by families. And indeed, the figures here are really interesting. Over 50% or approximately 50% of childcare is provided by families. Doesn't come into any policy document. And then of that, 62% of those, they're, um, the parents are full-time workers. And so there are all sorts of interesting facts in this paper that hasn't featured anywhere in NEFIT or any policy statement by a government. And I'm not blaming you for that, in fact, but it's, it's time that we recognised childcare 
and grasp the opportunity that going forward, it should be a public care model, number one. Number two, realise the amount of work that families do, unrecognised for childcare. And number three, to recognise there's absolutely no recognition at government level of the misalignment between opening up an economy and having no provision or no recognition for the extent of the problem and the solution to the problem. That's very difficult for me as a female TD to look at that and then to have to cope with, as I said already, a kite that was flown to say the department is going to be abolished. Just when the department is learning what to do uh, in relation to childcare and women and given her an honest, and I thank you for your honesty and your professionalism, given an honesty to these matters that was never there before. Thank you.